Hello and welcome back to The Daily Calm with Pastor Tom. We've been on this topic of intercession. And the last uh, thing I want to say about intercession is this. I want to point out what I consider to be the second greatest intercessory prayer in all of history. The second greatest intercessory prayer in all of history. It happened way back in Exodus and the 32nd chapter, Moses is up on the mountain receiving the Ten Commandments. God and Moses are fellowshipping. And while Moses was up on that mountain, he'd apparently been up there a long time. The people down below did what? They took their gold and they melted it down and they formed a golden calf idol. And Aaron holds it up and says, This, O Israel, this is your God who brought you out of Egypt. Can you imagine? God has just brought them out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He's protected them. He's fed them and cared for them. He's done nothing but been good to them. And in return, they build an idol and begin worshiping this golden calf. And even going so far to say, is this idol is who brought you out of the land of Egypt? So God tells Moses, in fact, God says, here's what your people who you, he won't even claim them, you brought out of the land of Egypt. Here's what they've done. And he tells Moses what they've done. So he says, here's my plan. I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to annihilate them and start again with you, Moses, and we'll just start fresh. Now, what does Moses do when he hears this wrath, this judgment that is to come upon his people? Does he try to take matters in his own hands and fix them himself? Does he try to outrun God's wrath? Maybe he sprints down the mountain and tries to fix everything and, 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 and tell the people to outrun God's wrath? No, no, no. No, he realizes all this is outside of his domain of power. So he does what? He intercedes. And he gives what I believe is the second greatest intercessory prayer of all time. He goes to God and he basically gives God these reasons why he should relent from his wrath. He says, look, if you do this, the Egyptians are just going to laugh. They're going to say, see, God just pulled him out of Egypt just so he could annihilate him. And, and remember your covenant with Abraham. He pleads. And you read this prayer and it's it's shameless. It's impudent. It's, it's, it's Moses crying out for his people. It's him going between. It's intercessory prayer. And incredibly... God relents. In Exodus 32, 14, it says, Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. You have to imagine, as this story was told over and over in Israelite history, as over and over they went back to the Torah, they, they had to scratch their heads. How could the Lord relent like that? How is it that he could just have this 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 wrath and this just wrath about to be poured out and yet it just goes away is God not a God of justice did he just sweep this sin under the rug no we who live on the other side of the death burial and resurrection of Jesus we know how this mystery gets solved because we know about the single greatest intercessory prayer that was ever prayed we know that many years after Moses' prayer on the mountain, we know there would be a true and better Moses, Jesus of Nazareth, who would go up a mountain. He would go up Calvary's hill. And the greatest intercessory prayer that was ever prayed, as Jesus stretched out his arms on that Roman cross and was crucified for us and our salvation, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was the single greatest intercessory prayer. Jesus was interceding. He was literally going between. And we know now the reason that God's wrath was not poured out on his people was because it was diverted and ultimately poured out on Jesus, our Savior. And in this way, we are forgiven and we receive the blessings of God, Jesus, the ultimate interceder. And the Bible says that he's still interceding for us. And that's why Jesus is the greatest intercessory prayer that's ever prayed. And that's why we can intercede for those we care about.